Hi guys, welcome to another episode of GTA Projects. I just wanted to share with you some important information regarding uh, how to set up your air tools, making sure you've got the correct working pressure, and subsequently you will experience better performance from your air tools. So firstly, I'm just going to do a little experiment to show you the difference that different diameter airlines make, internal diameter, and making sure that you've got the correct working pressure by plugging in one of these into the bottom of your air tool and also the differences that you can experience by installing a high flow Eurocoupler fitted to one of the inspection ports of the air vessel. Right, so first of all, there's many air tools that are quite air hungry. An impact wrench, things like sand blasters, DA sanders, tools like that. And in order for us to extract the best performance out of these tools, you're going to want to keep in mind that they're only going to be as powerful as your as the air volume and pressure that's supplying the tool. So if you're running a, a small air compressor with low outputs, uh, low CFM outputs, and running a 6 millimeter internal diameter air hose through the original regulated manifold, you, you won't experience very good performance. So there's ways that we can boost that, and I'm going to show you exactly how beneficial these little upgrades can be and the correct setup. So firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an example air tool here. This is our Burish 680 impact wrench. Firstly, it's fitted with high flow fittings. There's a, a different style fitting that we have in England, and that's PCL style, the UK style. They're slightly longer, but they've got a, a smaller internal diameter. We use the Euro high flow fittings on all our tools and air compressors, and they give good flow. So the first thing to be, bear in mind is that you want to have the Euro fittings for best performance. Now, what I've done is I've set up this little device, and all it is is a Y piece, quarter inch BSP thread on all three sides, uh, with a Euro quick connect coupler, a Euro nipple over there, and then a air pressure gauge. Now this simple device is quite handy because you can just plug it into the bottom of any of your air tool, like so, okay, and there you can find out exactly what air pressure your tool's running at. Now obviously the air airline connects to the bottom over there. So what I want to do is an experiment with three different setups. The first setup I'm going to use is this airline over here, which is a 10 meter long, 32 foot, 8 millimeter or 516 inch internal diameter. Firstly, I'm gonna plug this straight into the standard air compressor outlet. Secondly, number two, what we're gonna do is use the same airline, but we're gonna plug it into a coupler installed at the inspection port of the air compressor. Now what that'll do is that'll bypass the original air compressor regulator and manifold assembly that's fitted from the factory and the reason we would want to do that is the internal diameter of the regulator and the manifold from stock they're quite restrictive and I'll show you via demonstration now how restrictive that really is and the big difference that it makes and number three we're going to use the same coupler fitted to the inspection port of the vessel but we're going to plug in this hose over here, which is a 15 meter long, 10 millimeter internal diameter as opposed to 8 millimeter or 3 8 inch, 50 foot length. And then we'll, we'll, we'll test and see what exactly, we're going to have the same static pressure set up for all three, the resulting working pressure with uh, the same static pressure and the three different setups. So before we get on, it's very important to understand the difference between working pressure and static pressure. So when you set your compressor up and you're looking at the gauge and the regulator on the air compressor and you're adjusting that, the pressure in the airline when nothing is happening, when your air tool is static, you're not doing anything, that is called your static pressure. That is the pressure that is in the airline or available for the air tool to use at a rest position. Now, as soon as you depress the trigger on the air tool and allow the air to flow through the air tool, the reading at the air tool is your working pressure. It's very important to understand the difference between the two 
because a lot of people when they first get their air tool they look they look at the specifications and they see max pressure 90 psi and they think great okay i'll set the air compressor to 90 psi and we're good that's not going to work the reason being is that once the air tool is open i.e the trigger's depressed there is going to be a pressure drop through the air lines when the tool's operational so this is the reason why we fit one of these to the bottom of the air tool to make sure that we can understand exactly what pressure the air tool is getting whilst it's in operation i.e working pressure this air tool over here has a max working pressure of 90 psi in order for it to perform at its highest possible level we're going to want to get as close to that as we can let's turn on the compressor we get it up to pressure and make sure that the pressure on all three setups is exactly the same and, and let's see how we get on okay so we've run the air compressor up to its full pressure 10 bar 140 psi and we've plugged in the airline. This is the 10 meter long, eight millimeter internal diameter uh, airline. And we plugged it straight into the regulated outlet stock from the factory. And we've set the regulator to full pressure. So the pressure on the regulator is matching the, whatever the vessel pressure is at the time. And we're running this airline all the way through plugging it into our little test rig and to the bottom of the impact wrench. So, the static pressure in the line right now is about 10 bar, 140 psi. So let's write that down, 140 psi, 10 bar. When we depress the trigger on the tool, we'll watch the gauge and see what we end up with. That'll be our working pressure. As you can see, I dropped down to about 70 psi or 5 bar working pressure. So that is pretty much exactly a 50% drop in pressure. But that is the working pressure that it ended up with. So the second one we're gonna try now is the, the outlet which has been fitted to the inspection port. So what I've done here is I've fitted a Euro coupling to the inspection port of the air vessel. All you do on this particular model is you use an Allen head on a breaker bar and that's the blanking plug that's fitted to the, this compressor and stuck. Now obviously it's very important that when you remove this that there's no pressure in the air tank. If you're not sure what you're doing, then seek professional help. Because obviously air, air pressure and working on air vessels can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So what we're going to do is unplug this. Plug it into here, and that's going to be the only change that we make to the setup. So the airline is going to remain exactly the same, and we're going to see what pressure we get. But before we do that, let's get the static pressure back to the exact same amount that the previous setup was. Okay, so I've recharged the air compressor up to full 10 bar. A regulated pressure is not relevant because we're not plugged into there. So our vessel pressure is showing exactly 10 bar, about 140 psi. And that's plugged back into our little test rig. And let's see what the uh, working pressure results in with this setup. So that was about six and a half bar, 90 psi. Six and a half bar, 90 psi. So we started with the same static pressure, 140 psi, 10 bar, and we went down to 90 psi, 
at 6.5 bar, which is equivalently 35% drop in performance. So, obviously, bypassing the stock regulator manifold assembly and fitting a euro coupling to the inspection port on the vessel is beneficial and you can expect to see that sort of performance over the stock manifold. Okay, so finally I've set the compressor back up to 10 bar again and I've fitted the third setup now which is the coupler fitted to the inspection port with a 10 millimeter internal diameter airline at a 15 meter length. So let's see what we end up with here. So as you can see, it's plugged into the new airline. So that was 115 PSI. 110, 115 PSI and 8 bar. More or less. And it was the same static pressure of 10 bar. And subsequently, that's a 20% drop. Although this airline is 5 meters longer, the internal diameter is larger. So even though it's a longer airline, it still performs better than the uh, internal diameter of eight millimeter. So as you can see, there's a substantial difference in um, power that you're gonna achieve from your air tools based on what setups you have in terms of your airline diameter and where it's plugged into the air compressor. Okay, so this is the fitting that we fitted to the inspection port on the air vessel. As you can see, it's got a large internal diameter. Totally eliminates the restrictive manifold uh, that's fitted on the air compressor from the factory. It's a simple fitting, it's not too expensive. We sell it on our website. One thing to note though, with one of these fittings, if you're gonna fit that to the inspection port, it's an unregulated supply. So if you've got any air tools that run at a lower working pressure, and you plug it into here and the compressor is set to say 10 bar and you're running something that requires a working pressure of 2 bar you can overrun the tool and cause damage to it so just keep that in mind for things like impact wrenches, DA sanders you're generally okay with this but you need to be careful and make sure that you're reading and understanding the instructions and making sure that you're not, not overrunning the tool so that's one downside of this method an upgrade to a fitting simply fitted to the vessel would be to go for a high flow kit that we do on our website and that comprises of the following items. There's a full kit and a half kit that we do. The full kit has additional to this the 15 meter 10 millimeter internal diameter airline that we are using in this video, the black one um, that gave the best performance and then there's the half kit which is simply what you see here and that is half inch internal diameter filter regulator, which is nice. It also filters contaminants and uh, moisture and condensate from the airline. So that's great for spraying and also keeping your air tools in good condition, making sure they don't rust in internally. Obviously this comes with a, a gauge which gets fitted to either side, depending on which way you are mounting it to the wall. So that gets mounted to the wall and you can adjust your outlet pressure over here. In addition to that, you've got the large internal diameter airline, which connects via this elbow and has this ball valve here, so you can shut the supply on and off, which makes it easy to swap tools and, and whatnot. And this airline here is five meters long and it's got a 13 millimeter internal diameter. And then this connects to the outlet here and your airline to the tool uh, connects over there bit of PTFE tape to connect everything up and that's a really good solution. It means that you got all the benefits of high flow and high volume with the flexibility of being able to adjust the pressure uh, which is like I said quite important with certain tools that you want to run on the setup. 
So this is what I recommend if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and make sure that you've got maximum performance from your air tools with the flexibility and adjustability of, of uh, regulated supply as well as treatment of the air but to have good clean dry air to prevent rust and also great for spray painting to make sure you don't have contaminated air in your spray guns. And that's it. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. Um, if you've got any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. And all the best with your project.